WC's Claire de Lune. The title translates in English to Light of the Moon or Moonlight. And that title comes from Paul Verlaine's poem by the same name, Claire de Lune. Now certainly that moonlight depicts the piece so well. And if we look at some lines of the poem, we have the soul is a delicate landscape. The delicate and the landscape characteristics of this piece certainly are inspiring. Another line, the song or their song mingles with the moonlight. I love that idea of song and moonlight because we could have our kind of our rippling landscapes of color, but over that we get this song, we get a melody. So remember in the playing that we want to create the atmosphere, but we also want to bring in a poignant melody that's expressive right out in the forefront and with shaping above the landscapes, if you will. So Debussy added that title after, well after he wrote the piece, but they're a good marriage and a good inspiration. So how are we going to play this piece? If we take uh, normal scores of this, most all of the scores present a problem for the usual, typical pianist because there's no fingering. And that can be a problem because there's a lot of notes here and some intermingling between the hands. And uh, in my edition here of Debussy's Claire de Lune, I provided fingering including those finger substitutions where we have to change fingers on the same note. But something else that's really helpful, it's quite often a professional pianist will redistribute the notes instead of playing the notes just from bass clef in one hand and treble in the other. But we can take some of the notes that were used, typically written for one hand but pick it up from the other hand. And that redistribution between the hands can give much more fluent playing. And there's several spots here in the Claire de Lune, including that cross hand to that A flat at the end of the piece, that cadence, that really makes the intertwining of the hands easier. It takes out some of the more oh, difficult passage work, you might say. This isn't cheating at all. This is the professional way to approach it because we want fluency and expression. So we want to take out the difficulties. So I highly encourage using uh, this edition. And if the piece still feels a little hard to you, then you might go to our Adult Piano Adventures Classics Book 2. Uh, Nancy and I wrote an arrangement here of Claire de Lune that is very, very simple in comparison. And yet it captures the form and the structure and the beauty of the expression, but done in a way that you don't have to deal with all of the impediments to be able to play it expressively. A good course of study is do the easy arrangement, and then you can poke into the full score here. Maybe section by section, you can figure out some of the passages and make progress. Well, let's look at the piece itself here. I've got the score in front of me, and the first thing we see are five flats. And five flats can seem intimidating until we realize there are five black keys on the keyboard. So we really have that whole set of black keys at our disposal. We have a seven note scale, and so we need to find seven minus five, two. So there's gonna be two white keys, right? Five black keys, and we have to find those two white keys. So with five flats, we know we're in the key of D flat. So D flat's our home key. That means a half step below is our leading tone. So we get that leading tone pulling us up here. So there's a nice hand position for us. And then our other white key is gonna to have to come here, either the F or the F flat. And hearing our major chord on one, that shows that we need the F in there. Interestingly enough, WC contrasts that some in this piece by going to that F flat, which is uplifting, if you will, a little bit of an impressionistic and late romantic technique. Okay, so now we have just all the five black keys, our two white keys. And if we watch how the music progresses, even in our opening, right here and coming down what do we have outside on these we're coming down the scale aren't we so we're just coming down the scale in six and then five one so our scale anchors the motion so watch for those scales a six is what a six is a third flipped over and so when we're concentrating on our scale, don't think just motion in seconds, but we might think of our scale in thirds. So I build on step one, 
build up in thirds. Step two, build up in thirds. There's our two chord then. Our three chord, be careful, we're only using scale tones. Four, five, six, and how about seven? Well, that marries right in with step five, because there's our A flat five chord and the seven, root third, fifth, seven. Maybe we even stack another tone on it. We can put that anywhere we want so we get this more lush sounds on that five, seven, and then that resolves back to our one chord. So we have seven chords we're working with, but of those, there's some important ones. One, that's our anchoring of our home tone. And then we get this kind of amen of four, one at the beginning. But importantly is step five. One, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna get this cadence of five, seven, one, as we do in so much classical and romantic work as well. Here just Debussy's gonna stack more tones on top of step five. Now here's an interesting point. To find our structures in the piece, we're gonna look for those fives and the ones, but also let's go a fifth higher yet. So going down five here, we might go a fifth above the step five. And that's step two, isn't it? The E flat. So that's a two, five, one. And this is a jazz chord progression. You often hear about two, five, one in jazz. Here Debussy is picking up and anchoring that two and with the same extended chords that are found a little later in jazz as well, we get these elements of two, five, one. Look at that second page, we get E flat, there's our two, pulling that F over top of it and then resolving back down. So we get two and where does that go? It goes into five. And then notice the line, we're coming up the scale, a half step up to six, seven, walking up, two, and then five, and then back to one. So we have that anchoring of two, five, one here as we're moving into our, through our second page. And how about the end of the piece? Here's our two. And then five. And one. So this elements of finding the two, five, one, these structural points will give us simplicity as you're moving through the piece and as you're studying the piece. And when we find the simplicity, then we can bring out the simplicity of the expression. It gives us attention to open our ears, and with our ears we can control the sound. The sparkle or a little bit of metallic sound on certain tones and the wash of atmosphere and other tones.